you can almost summarize our lives as a series of experiences where we can choose how deep we want to go and how deeply we want to uh, experience realities. For example, you can be in a relationship and experience some sort of an argument. Now, most people, when they get into a really bad situation in their relationship, would get up and leave. Or uh, the same in uh, any endeavor or situation. Imagine you're thinking about starting a career as a painter or a singer, photographer or coach or a writer. And you get these uh, zaps of negative emotion that tell you, you know, don't, don't do it, don't go there, it's not a good place. Keep away from this situation. You don't want to look any deeper into where this leads. Go back where you came from. Now, the remedy to this, to this what really allows us to go deeper is a lack of options to the contrary. So imagine you're in front of a room and that room is filled with mouse traps, and you know that crossing that room would require you to almost certainly step on some of them. You, you would never go to that room. Now let's say there was some really cool incentive, like you know, $100 at, at the end of the room. Would you cross then? Well, again, it depends on your temperament, it depends on your life situation. But what if behind you there was a fire that was uh, closing in on you or some sort of a bear? Would you still choose not to go on these mousetraps or would you run right across them happily and not think of complaining for a single moment because the alternative is unbearably worse than a few mouse traps. This is the situation most people find themselves in and based on how far you can you want to go or you're willing to go that room full of mouse traps might as well be a room full of fire and demons. I found myself in pretty much the same situation when I decided to go back to recording videos. And when I say decided, I meant committed, you know, created that fire, that bear, that fear that makes you go forward. I've been delaying making videos for about three, four good months because I am scared that the videos will not be good enough, that my content is not good enough. And once you're out of that loop of, uh, you know, that upward spiral of uh, motivation, once you stop doing it for a while, it's really hard to go back. Especially because now you have some sort of a reputation and people expect certain things of you. So every time I would have an intuition or uh, a voice telling me, Robbie, this is a really, really good idea for a video. You really should record this. I would immediately think, uh, I don't know, like, is it really that good? I mean, is the presentation going to be good enough? Is it articulated like I want to? Am I a good of an authority as I need to be? And I found myself not doing it. <laughs> I would not record a video. And if I did, it was some half-ass shit where it's like, oh, you know, I didn't put effort, so... 
even if it bombs, you know, it's not my fault. I didn't put any effort. Or when I did want to make a video, I would uh, work so hard on creating a high, high, high quality content video uh, where I didn't have to express myself really. I, I, I would just research and research and write and and then come up with this idea, but it wouldn't be me. It would be just a representation of a thought that I think would be good for my audience. So even that wasn't it. And because I've committed to making two videos every day, I had no choice now but to continue to go back to making videos and to be in that situation where I'm scared. I don't want to get into it. I don't want to do it because the critical voice, you know, and the anxiety in the stomach it doesn't want you to go there. But because you have to, you know, it's like when you need to get into cold waters. I'm not the kind of guy that jumps, <laughs> okay, and, and many people aren't. I'm the kind of guy that dips a toe, and even that is after a bit of convincing. Um, and then after I, you know, put in the toe, I put in, um, you know, the ankle, and then the knee, then the, you know, the groin area, and so on and so forth. Um, so it's more painful that way, that's for sure, than just jumping in. But I just haven't found myself having the uh, initiative or however you want to call it, to just jump in. I like to ease myself in and then go full, fully in. And that commitment to making two videos every day forced me to um, keep trying. So I tried a couple of different formats and I was like, okay, it doesn't matter how the video turns out, you have to record a video. And uh, so this is the result. So I hope this message uh, inspires you to allow yourself to go to whatever depth, whatever level of depth that your conscious, your gut is telling you to go. That place where you want to go, but you're too scared to go right now, so you just put it aside. Ask yourself, what commitment do you need to create? What repercussions where it would be a big enough of a danger, that bear or that fire, to make you step into that room, to force you into that room. Once you find that, there's no level where you can't go. But just a word of warning, not all rooms are filled with mouse traps that are painful but relatively harmless there are really 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 dark rooms where you might not come back so your subconscious is not hiding you from danger in vain Once I first discovered this ability to set a goal, create a proportional level of risk that would force me to accomplish that goal, and uh, basically accepted being so anxious that I would wake up with a panic attack every day while progressing, you know, faster than I've ever progressed, though, um, I began to really take advantage of it and uh, abuse it to the level where I started aiming into places where I was not prepared yet. And sometimes when you go into fight with the lion or the dragon, uh, you get eaten or <laughs> bit really hard. And uh, that happened to me uh, about two years ago, almost, I guess, a year and a half. So... Once you do find that, that this concept helps you, you know, being able to basically set any goal and simply match it with a proportional risk that would force you to do it, you know, basically the analogy of uh, 
you know, if you were uh, uh, thirsty and you had to get water or else you'll die, uh, you're going to get water. You're going to get very creative <laughs> on how to get water. So um, if I held a gun to your head and I told you you need to get $100 in the next 30 minutes or you're going to die, uh, trust me that your brain is going to come up with a couple of really good ways. Um, and you'd be surprised, but um, much more ethical than you might presume. So you wouldn't necessarily go straight to uh, thieving, you know, and uh, stealing stuff, especially if you have a very high IQ. But uh, eventually, of course, when the the the, the, the uh, ends justify the means and the goal is too high, but, you know, you have no choice, then, yeah, you might start to uh, compromise on your moral and ethical integrity. So that was just a quick word of warning. And uh, I would love to help you. So feel free to contact me or schedule a free strategy session with me on Skype. You can also download my free ebook that is 60 pages of gold on how to make thousands of dollars uh, while traveling by offering your services online. And also you can purchase my autobiography, my 300-page book about me and how I got to where I am through my website for $37. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you haven't subscribed yet, Feel free to do so and let me know what you think.